May 1st marks 80 years since the historic USS Bofin was commissioned. And our Casey Lunn is on board the warship this morning, squeezing through the tight corridors and giving us a history yes. lesson. <laughs> How goes this morning, Casey? Very tight quarters. <laughs> very, very tight quarters, Steve, as you could imagine. We're actually in the galley. We'll zoom out. Photographer John Yasunaga will give you a uh, beautiful view of the cooking facility here. Could you imagine uh, not only cooking in that small of a space, uh, but the heat that would have been in here with the engines, the lights, and all that thing. Uh, you know, Chuck Merkel is with me from the uh, Pacific Fleet Submarine Museum. Chuck, uh, the executive director, also a submariner himself, a former submarine commander. Tell us about this space before we talk about the 80th uh, anniversary of the commemoration. Oh, sure, Casey. So the, the galley and the mess deck are very important spaces on the ship. Uh, there's a meal prepared every six hours, and uh, crew, when the meal's ready, the oncoming men would come in and eat the meal. They would go up, relieve the watch, and then the offgoing men would come down and eat. And a good meal can set the tone of a day. A bad meal will give you something to complain about for your next watch. <laughs> and, uh, so this is a very but you're probably happy to eat no matter what. That's right. There's no going to get dine on. What, no. Now we don't have to zoom in on the menu there, Chuck. But what was a, what was an average meal like for uh, for some of the sailors aboard the Bofin? So I can I can read a little bit here. So lunch today would have been or lunch on one day green split pea soup, oh. roast beef with natural gravy, glazed onions, corn on the cob. Not salad, bad. yeah. And, 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 you know, we've also been fortunate enough, and because folks like you preserve this history, and I want to show some photos um, from uh, the archives, some of the crew aboard the Bowfin. Uh, you know, I want to talk also about the men that were aboard this ship and that were served on submarines during World War II. We lost more than 3,500 of them. Um, how unique were submarines in the fleet during that, uh, especially the Japanese theater? So the, theater. Yeah, so our, our Navy submarine force was only 2% of our Navy during World War II. Um, we had over 200 submarines conduct war patrols, almost 1,500 war patrols in the Pacific during the war. And they were responsible for destroying 5 million tons of Japanese shipping. Wow. So over 60% of the Japanese merchant fleet that was sunk were sunk by submarines. And 30% of the Japanese warships were sunk by submarines. So a tremendous contribution from a small force, but at a tremendous cost. We yeah. lost 52 submarines and, as you stated, 30, over 3,500 men. Yeah. Uh, Chuck Merkel with us from the Pacific Submarine or Pacific Fleet Submarine Museum. Thank you for being with us and showing us around. We've got still so much to show you. That's what I love about being at any of our Pearl Harbor sites is you have a blast. You have a lot of fun, but you also take a moment to really think about the sacrifice that so many people made uh, that day or that uh, that period of time during World War II. So uh, we obviously thank those men and women that served and uh, and that still serve today, Steve. We've got still so much to show you. We're eventually going to get um, on deck above. Uh, uh, out of uh, the out of the uh, you know below deck area of the yeah. of the submarine, you have to, and uh, we've got a lot to see. Hopefully, waiting for some better weather. We'll see. We'll have to check in with Guy Hoggy on that. We'll send things back to you, my friend. All right, but we got to work on those empty plates, though. All right, but uh... <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> we'll see what we can get down here. Yeah. All right. Thanks, bud. Uh, Six forty.